When you take a look at your soil test, it may seem like a foreign language to you initially, but we want to get you speaking that soil test language. So our next topic is phosphorus tests, Bray versus Olson. Well, there are a lot of different phosphorus tests being used by labs across our country. Probably the most common two are the Bray tests and the Olson tests. That's why we're talking about them. But there are some other ones out there too. I guess we just have to see those get proven over the years, like Bray and Olson have proven to be fairly reliable in certain situations. Here's my example. Soil pH. If you have a very high soil pH, the Olson tests are a little bit more accurate with how much phosphorus will come available this year. If you have acid soils or pH is lower than 7, the Bray tests tend to be a little bit more accurate. What we're looking at with the Bray tests, there are two of them. There's a weak Bray and a strong Bray. The weak Bray is also known as the P1, and the strong Bray is known as P2. The P1 test, or the weak Bray, will tell us how much phosphorus is available for this year's crop. The P2 is the total phosphorus, that's both the available and what's left in reserve in the soil that's not available for this year's crop. What we're really looking for here with that weak bray versus strong bray is if there's a big gap, in other words, if let's say that P2 or strong bray is showing 100 parts per million and the weak bray is showing three parts per million, that tells you that almost all your soil phosphorus is tied up. We've got a serious problem out there. Chances are it's a pH issue, but you just have to know, hey, maybe I need to do something else to my soil rather than just throw a whole bunch more phosphorus out there because I do have a problem. Well, you're just going to end up with more phosphorus tie up until you get to the source of that issue. And what many guys will do is just say, well, I just have to feed my crop. So I'm going to put it in furrow or I'm going to put it in a band so it's relatively close to the row so I can try to avoid any more tie up. That's fine to get by for a year. And if you're on rented ground with a one year contract, I get it. But long term on ground that you own or are going to be farming for a long time, you've got to start looking at what is the cause of that phosphorus tie up in my soils and start addressing it. Because like you were saying, Brian, just to your example, if you've got a whole bunch of P2 phosphorus out there, why not try to see if you can release that phosphorus over time and get a bunch of phosphorus that you've already paid for that's already out in the field to come available and come into your crop. Before you make a fertilizer recommendation for yourself on your farm, we just advise you take a look at how much your crop is actually going to remove. There is the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app. You can plug in any crop that you've got and what your yield goal is and it will tell you how much total phosphorus you need. Then you can take a look at either the Olson test, if you have higher pH soil above 7, or the weak bray or P1 test if you have soil pH below 7 and then that'll tell you how many parts per million are available. Well, you've got to relate parts per million here to the pounds per acre we told you you needed for your crop. So how do you make that adjustment? If you have a soil sample that is six Six inches deep, that is representing two million pounds in your field because if I was to weigh out an acre six inches deep, it would weigh approximately two million pounds. All right, so to convert parts per million to pounds per acre, all you need to do in that six inch test is multiply times two. So if my number came up as I have 15 parts per million, multiply times two, I have 30 pounds per acre. All right, well, here's the other measurement that you don't normally think about in terms of telling me how much phosphorus is out in my soil, organic matter. Right. Why is that so important and how much phosphorus it's is It's mineralization. There? And you already are well aware of, hey, my organic matter over a long period of time breaks down in my soil. Well, when it breaks down, it releases nutrients for free every year. So for each 1% of organic matter, I'm gonna get approximately four to seven pounds of phosphate out. So in other words, if I had 5% organic matter, let's just figure on the low side, the 4%, 5 times 4 is 20, I'd have about 20 pounds of phosphate coming available every year for free. And this is the part that I think a lot of people don't look at. They just look at what's my available phosphorus on the test and how many more pounds do I need to put. You know, this year especially when dollars are going to be really tough to spend, especially on, on the last little bit of fertility that you need, take a look at that organic matter in your soil and then think about, wow, look at all that that I'm getting for free. You're going to consider that in, all right, I don't need to apply 100% of what my needs are. The organic matter mineralization is going to release some of that phosphorus, but then think about it this way. I've got to increase that organic matter level over time. Hey, one other thing I guess I'd mention here too, we, we talked about how many pounds does the crop need, how much the soil has already, how much is going to come available through mineralization. All that's great to talk about, but let's not forget that there is most likely going to be some of that phosphorus you're counting on, some that you may be applied, getting tied up. So phosphorus is one of the nutrients that a lot of people like to overdo a little bit just to make sure they have enough available for the crop and I get that. The issue is 
Phosphorus can go with your soil if you have soil erosion. So what we advise you to do is put your phosphorus in the soil at least an inch deep, but preferably six to 10 inches deep, then it's safe. It's never going to leach. Phosphorus is virtually immobile in soil, but if the soil erodes, like I say, and that phosphorus is on top of the soil, your phosphorus just left the field. So that's one risk. The other risk is tie up. Either way, I've got to make sure that I have enough and I've protected my phosphorus. So a lot of people like preventing tie up, they'll use a veil, for example. That works quite well. We've used that on our farm. We continue to use that on our farm. Agriculture liquid fertilizer, they have products. Pro Germinator, for example, right. it has a protected phosphorus source that's not going to get tied up. Right. So talk to your agronomist about ways you can protect your phosphorus but all we're trying to say is you've got to have phosphorus to raise a good crop and you need to understand how to read that Bray and that Olson test. Well one other thing you need to understand to raise a good crop is how to control our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show.